alive, so... <clears throat> All right, I think we are live. I have this beautiful picture up right now with that um, that car that was uh, that was actually um, drawn by Franz Franz Belleville, and uh, we're here. And I can see that a few people are watching, which is fantastic. Welcome! I'm so glad you are joining us. Um, and um, I'm actually pretty excited to talk to friends. We've seen her last week, last week or two weeks ago with uh, Danny. She was drawing with yeah, Danny together. 30. And uh, you can also already hear her on the background. So um, that's, uh, that's uh, she's, she's waiting for us. And I just want to uh, give a little bit of um, the rules for today. Uh, so I'm going to bring uh, France up in just a minute, uh, just waiting until everybody uh, is, is coming in because it's always a little bit hard to find for some reason, even though we are just live and streaming. I can see Maria saying hi from Brazil, Barbara Politano, hey, from California, John from Scotland, and Uta from Germany. This is fantastic. You, you guys are from everywhere, from Bavaria, from uh, Paso Robles. Hi, Robert. And um, Virginia. Good, good, good. Um, so uh, today, France is not uh, uh, where she usually is. She's actually in Maine. So let's find out why that is. And um, if you have any questions for France, uh, please post them in the chat so I can see them, I can pull them up and uh, we can uh, ask those questions and um, Franz can answer them. So let's bring her on. Let's see. Hi Franz. Hi, how are you? Good, it's good to see your smiling face. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to see you. Yeah, welcome. Thank you so much for making time in your weekend. So yeah, you're, you're in Maine. What are you doing there? I'm in Maine, and I'm up there. It's in Rockland, Maine, uh, which is way above Portland, and I am here to visit uh, with friends and um, hopefully visit the Farnsworth Museum, which has uh, currently an Andrew and Jamie Wyeth exhibit, and I don't want to miss out on that. So it's a good excuse to travel fantastic. eight hours. Yeah, fantastic. <laughs> That's really yeah. good. So do you put any, how, how, I mean, eight hours, do you drive that in one go? How do you even do it? I stopped twice. I drove last night. I mean, uh, uh, yesterday during the day, I left at uh, around 10 something in the morning and I was here. It actually took a little more than eight because I stopped two times for gas. Um, but yeah, it, it, the trip itself was nine hours and it was fine. Yeah. That's good. It's worth it. Yeah, man. And then tomorrow you will drive back or yes. today, tomorrow. Yeah. Well, I love the background with the, with the flowery, uh, uh wallpaper. Yeah. It's so. a bed and breakfast and it's amazing. It's called Lime Rock Inn. And if you guys are ever in Rockland, Maine, wow, what a place. Wow. A little plug it's... for the bed and breakfast. There oh, you yeah, go. Really, awesome. I, I will. I will definitely write raving reviews because the people here, the hosts, have been amazing. Oh, fantastic. Mm -hmm. So uh, will you be drawing as well while you're there? Um, I'm going to try. My intention is to, to put aside a little bit of time if I can. Yeah. Uh, but I'm here only really for one day, uh, so we'll see what can happen. But the weather is beautiful, so it could happen. That's good. Yeah, and you're also visiting friends, so you want to be socializing Correct. too, right? Exactly. And you know how that is. It's hard to uh, sometimes sit around the table and say, okay, guys, now I'm going to withdraw. And I'm going to zone out and zone exactly. in again. Yes. In my zone. Yeah. yeah. It's, that's a tricky thing. With other people who draw, it's a piece of cake, right? Um, because true. everybody understands that, I think, you know, pulling out a sketchbook, especially most of us, and I don't know if you're one of them, we talked about this, um, some of us can't carry a conversation while drawing, mm -hmm. but I can. I yeah, no yeah. I, I I can and I can't. If I am if I'm drawing and uh, while I'm explaining what I'm doing, that's fine. But yes. um, I sometimes feel like if I'm because sometimes I, I feel like 
drawing when I'm with friends, you know, sitting at the table and just having drinks or after dinner or whatever, and I just pull out my, uh, my sketchbook. But I always feel a little bit bad because then I just get into the whole drawing and listening to um, the conversations. And I am really, you know, getting everything, but I'm not as responsive then. So, yeah, yeah, I, yeah I could imagine that. Right. Yeah, it's it's different. I don't know. I can't have the conversation and do the drawing at the same time. Maybe that's something you can learn, actually, with a lot of uh, practice. Ooh. Yeah. So um, it's really good to see that there's a lot of people trickling in saying hello. And um, Cheryl Andre is actually also in Maine. And she says Rockland is great. So <laughs> that's Yay. okay. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Hi, Cheryl. <laughs> So, yeah, you're not alone there. That's great. That's good. Yeah. Um, so let's uh, see. Um, everyone who's joining, if you have any questions for friends, um, let us know. Post them and um, we'll feed them to her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, for, absolutely. For starters, I actually have uh, a question here that was posted earlier. Um, the question is, all of your vehicle drawings are so amazing. Did you ever struggle with that subject in the beginning? Yes, uh, like everything else. Mm. Um, I think I went through a lot of failed ones before I finally got kind of the hang of it. Um, but for me, uh, the motivation to want to draw these, you know, these cars, mainly cars, you know, when I was a kid, I used to draw my dad's motorcycle, um, but now it's cars. I, I'm just so eager to render them that, you know, it helped me overcome that. Mm. Whereas I think in other topics, you know, like things that are hard to draw for some people, like for me, trees, um, I don't have sometimes enough motivation to overcome that initial failure step does that make sense where oh my gosh I really can't draw a tree and then I just sort of like avoid drawing trees altogether with cars it was just like yeah at first it didn't look like anything um I mean I had a car but I knew there was something off I needed yeah. to learn yeah. something about the perspective to make it work and then as I drew more and more and wanted to draw more and more it helped right Right, yeah. I once did um, started a, a hundred day project, yeah. and I was like, that would be a great period of time to learn something. So I decided that I wanted to do that hundred day pro hundred day project about wheels. So anything drawing anything with wheels, I gave up after like a week. <laughs> I was like, I'm just really not enjoying this. <laughs> no, I get it. So, because yeah. you have the wheels look so different from one with Oh no, I get it. Yeah, get and it. I, I I took it like a bit of broad thing because I always have a I always have a hard time drawing cars. So I thought if I do this, then it's a broad thing. I can do bicycles, I can do whatever, anything with wheels and then cars too. But just like you say, like with the with the trees, you can't really be bothered to really dive into it. Maybe because right. you don't enjoy it that much. So, exactly. And I think that is fine. I think it's fine. But I, if it's if it's frustrating, then I think you should just every time that you you know are drawing on location and you see a car there, that you should just mm -hmm. include it in your drawing, just for the. Uh, uh, experience of it and the practice like you get. No doubt. And yeah. there are different ways to do cars when you include them in a drawing. Um, you know, there, there are people out there who when they include cars in their drawings, they suggest a shape which tells you, oh, of course, there's a car, but it's very cleverly done to the point where, okay, they didn't get into the detail of, mm -hmm. you know, the headlights and so forth, but it's just enough mm -hmm. to suggest the car. And I know there's a way to do that with trees. I just haven't you know, I haven't found the trick. Right, right, yeah. And at some point, you will find a trick, and then you're like, oh. <laughs> but seriously, absolutely. Like, for instance, just a couple of days ago, when was it? Um, literally a couple of days ago. I believe it was on the 11th of the or the 12th. I had to take my car uh, to the dealership 
because my tires were, were kind of goofy. There was vibration at high speed. And I knew that I had this big trip coming here, coming up, so I needed my car to be perfect. Sure, yeah. So I'm yeah. sitting in their waiting room, and I've got all these cars in front of me. And I decided to sit on the sidewalk instead of being in the, in the waiting room and seeing them through their glass. So I went in their parking lot, and I quickly drew oh, wow. uh, a Mazda, for instance. And, and this is a perfect example of something that really doesn't have all the information. Like, for instance, I don't know if you can see, I forgot to do a door here. Yeah, and but who sees door, that? <laughs> right. And, and frankly, it still looks like a car. And yeah. people who know car will tell you, oh, my gosh, it's the Mazda logo. You know, so it's a Mazda. Right, right, right. You know? Yes. Um, but this was a really good experience because it told me, okay, I'm, I'm still good doing a car here and there. You know, yeah. sometimes I, I feel, yeah. oh, can I still draw a car? I haven't drawn a car in a month. You know, it's... Yeah, it's kind of weird. So can uh, it, it, can it, you it, even yeah. unlearn? Yes, I think I I don't know. What do you think? Can we unlearn? Can we stagnate and then sort of like regress? I don't think so. I think if you if you don't draw for a while certain things or at all, you will feel rusty, but you you won't unlearn. I think it's like riding a bicycle. I mean, once you know how to do it, you know the mechanics no of it. There's no undoing it. There's right, not there's really no undoing any it. undoing it. But if you haven't rode the bicycle for a couple of years, then it might be like, oh, right, how mm -hmm. does this feel again? Oh, mm -hmm. now I know. I think... That's what I think, but I don't know because I, I yeah, I think... It, no, but I think there is so much muscle memory resting. involved yes. yeah. in drawing that I think what you're saying is true. Yeah. Probably. I think what you're saying is true, absolutely. Yeah, yeah there's no unlearning. There's no way. No. So the, the car that you just showed us, I mean, that looks really real. How? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I mean, this whole course, uh, this was actually the last week of that course, which was an amazing experience, actually. Um, and we've had a lot of discussion, like how important is it to draw some, something that looks really real? When is it really real? Is it really real when you put a story in it and maybe, you know, slap on your own colors that aren't even there in real time? Or does it look really real when it's just sort of perfect in perspective and in shadows and in shading? How do you feel about that? I, I find that for me, um, you know, all the work I do is pretty realistic and literal because I, I don't allow myself enough to really stray from that because I'm afraid that if I do, it's going to just not be right. And I still have this this idea that for me, for something to look right, it needs to be very much faithful to, to what, I, what I see in front of me. So in that respect, I think I'm very much, uh, you know, realistic. Um, and as far as um, how to make it even more realistic, yes, I think it's a, it's a matter of shape. But more recently, thanks to the iPad, I've... Um, I've gotten to experience and experiment more with uh, shadows. And I find that the way you put light, the way you convey light in a drawing can be just as important as let's say the shape of the object. It, and if you don't mind, I'll get back to, uh, to this car, which was sitting in mind. the sun yeah. and it was flooded with light. It was really all around. And the only sh real shadow that I could see was inside the cabin and underneath the car, it cast a shadow, but the light was really coming from, it seemed, from above, because the, the shadow was not even cast, you know, very far away. Um, and that, to me, adds as much realism to a drawing as the shape itself, because I'm sure my car is kind of off somewhere. I'm sure that if we compared it, let's say, to a photo, I didn't take a photo, unfortunately, but if I had... Mm. Maybe I would have been able to put them side by side and really notice, oh my gosh, I goofed up here, you know. Yeah. Um, but to me, shadows, like how to put your light and how to convey that into a drawing, I think is just as important. And that's where I think the cross-hatching really comes into play. Right, right, yeah. Um, I think you're right. Um, 
I also, and this is, by the way, I, I don't know about you, Kusha, but this is something that I tackled with pen right away. Uh, I did it with my Copic pen, this uh, multi-liner one, mm -hmm. the Copic mm -hmm. multi-liner. Um, so I didn't use pencil first. So um, for me, again, darkening right away in the right spots kind of helped me uh, move on to the lighter spots and so forth. So, yeah, anyway. Yeah, I think um, light and shadow is really, really important. And I mean, that's also uh, part of your class. And we talked about that in uh, in other uh, classes too, uh, uh, in Danny's class. That's also one of, uh, he really stretches on that too, like look at the lights. Yes. Um, because that really gives your drawing volume and context. Correct. And when we look at, at that drawing, um, I can also see that it, there's a really um, uh, um, strong perspective, like foreshortening. Um, do you think that it's easier or harder to draw a car, for example, when it's so foreshortened? In my opinion, it's easier. Yeah, me too. Um, Why? <laughs> it, yeah, it really is because if you if you really look at a car from up close, I was sitting fairly close to the car. You know the way Lapin does with his cars yeah. um, when he sits in like in the front and then makes that really exaggerated. Um, it's kind of something like this that happened, and so basically, what all you have to worry about is the front of the car, mm -hmm. and then the rest is really just kind of disappears in the distance. And if you really look, and one more time, I'm going to uh, raise it up, there's not much car going on here. Did you notice? Yeah. The, the distance here, which is much longer in real life than even the width of the car itself, disappears completely by being squished and squished this way. It just, and it's done. Yeah. And really, yeah. this part of the car here is hardly anything. The wheel is barely suggested. Um, it, you've got the rear view mirror, which covers already, you know, a third of it. So I find that kind of dramatic perspective to really help. Yes. The drawing yes. of anything for that matter. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're right. Yeah. Um, I feel like that way you have a little bit freedom, a, a little bit more freedom to mess up a little bit because, you know, it, I don't know if if you have like this frontal view or a side view um, somehow I have that too with uh, buildings instead of sitting right in front of it I'd rather have it like you know That's sort of right. towering out and from the side yes. that makes it also very interesting but also more interesting easier yes. to to capture the shape um, by capturing that uh, that perspective um, mm. Uh, and then also someone is actually asking about the perspective, the perspective problem. Um, mm -hmm. He or she is, is asking, do you use traditional methods like the vanishing point and such, or do you use different methods? So my problem, as, as some of you know, is that I was never trained um, formally in art. So... The little bit that I know about perspective was explained to me kind of on the fly by colleagues because I teach high school. So I have art, uh, art teacher colleagues who um, took a kind minute out of their time to tell me, oh, have you ever heard of two-point perspective? And of course, I had never heard of that. What so is that even? Me, yeah, <laughs> uh, please enlighten me. So um, my friend Megan once sat next to me and did these lines once that kind of crossed like this and it made so much sense to me. And ever since she explained that to me, even though I don't formally use them, um, again, using this, when I drew this car, I would say that, yes, it does answer, uh, you know, this, uh, this two point perspective uh, thing, but they're not formally there, but I kind of like keep them in the back of my head. So when I start my drawing, I sort of see lines going this way and I see lines going that way, sort of. Um, so I keep things very informal. Um, I don't draw the lines. I don't mm. draw the lines on the paper. No, I don't. But I think my understanding of that really helped me a lot with the drawing of the cars. Okay, so it's in the back of your mind and that helps you to yeah. 
Do you yeah. think, because when you look at that car and then there's this teeny tiny side of the car even visible and then you're like, can, can that even be right? But when you have that vanishing point thing in the back of your mind, it does make right. more sense. It does make more sense because you are reassured by the fact that as things go further and smaller, things get squished, literally squished, like the windows on the building, right, yeah. will, will get thinner and thinner as they go away yeah. in the distance. And it's the same thing for a car. By the time you get to the back wheel, the back wheel no longer looks like uh, an oval. It, it, it is squished to the point that it's, you know, it's barely anything. It's almost just a line. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and we've seen that also in uh, people drawing people, where you also had a crazy foreshortened perspective at some point. That's then, right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and, and then you also for, sort of stumbled funny. through it, like, wait, is that is the knee here? How does it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And is it really that big? Yeah. Yes, it can. Exactly. And even if you make it more dramatic, I think it's even more fun. Like you know, you can really emphasize that a, a tiny bit more and make you know, the person even more foreshortened than, than it is in reality. Yeah. 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 Excellent. Good, good answer. Um, here's, yes, I think that's a good answer to the question. Um, here's another question. Um, I love cross hatching, but I struggle with it, mostly with taking this decision on which direction I should start doing it. And with mm -hmm. round mm -hmm. object, if, uh, objects, if I follow the round shape, it doesn't look well when I do that, or, or not, and keep this line straight. How do you make this decision? Do you think about that before you start? Does it change according to the shape? Ha! Ah, so many questions. <laughs> I know. Cross-hatching is tricky, but one thing is for sure is that when you start cross hatching i'm going to you know have a have a pen in my hand so that you can actually see the the motion mm -hmm. um, first of all something that i realized i was doing that I, of course i did not realize before i had to explain it when i cross hatch i always cross hatch towards me i know it seems like so obvious but i've seen other people cross hatch or tell me well i try to do this but they were cross hatching away from them yeah. I think that that simple gesture, the fact that I, I go up to down or at least far to close, far to close, um, keeps a much better control on the gesture itself. Right. And, and that's crucial because you know that in cross hatching, the lines, obviously, that's why it's called cross hatching. They cross, whether mm -hmm. they actually cross like this or like this mm -hmm. or like that, right? They do cross. But in order to retain this gesture, which is the safe gesture, the one that I have a good control on, the one thing that needs to move is the paper itself. So basically, your paper, you cannot have a stiff uh, set piece of paper uh, in front of you. You have to be ready when you crosshatch, because my gesture is this, right? My gesture is this. The paper is the thing that moves. It is constantly Right. moving when I cross hatch. Right. And so that's that's one part of the answer. Now, when it comes to curving, right, um, if you went with long hatches, which in my opinion are, are harder because you have to slow down. And whenever we slow down, you know that we have a little less control over the, the stroke. Um, but if they are longer, then they have a better chance of being curved with whatever curve you're dealing with. If you keep those hatches very short, let's say, I don't know what size you're going to be drawing on, but if you keep them short, then you don't have to curve them as much. And it's how many hatches you're going to do that are going to determine the roundness of your of your subject. I see. Yeah. So, yeah, that, that really is something that I had to think about because I do it so subconsciously. Um, that I had really to think, oh, wow, that's a long one. So I know that when I do a long one, I tend to curve on the curvy surface. Right. Um, if I had a, a good example to show you of this, hmm, I don't know if I do. No, this is not a great example. I, was, I drew um, a uh, ketchup bottle once. Um, these are super small little hatches. This was a, a pretzel that I found on 
<laughs> the classroom floor. <laughs> so some, <laughs> someone left a pretzel on the floor of my classroom and I thought, oh, this thing is gorgeous. Before I throw it away, I'm going to draw it, right? This, look at the size of this. This is very small. These little yeah. hatches are super tiny. And yet I was able to convey you know, the curve of of the pretzel itself. So now it's all about how much cross-hatching you put to let the light uh, say that, basically. Yeah, so good. And there's a shine to it because you left a lot of white and then you see the, is, the right? little salt uh, thing. Yes. It's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And mind you, I need to share this with you. I had started and I didn't like it. So this was my first try. Oh, really? And why didn't uh -huh. you like it? I think because, if I remember well, my pen was a very thin one. Yeah. And I did not like the results of the very thin strokes. So uh -huh. I went with my comfort zone of using my O5, uh, the Micron O5. Uh -huh. And that, to me, always worked in terms of thickness but also, yeah just to give you an idea I, I, I sometimes do t you know two things before I get it somewhere right? I kind of like this unfinished piece too but um, yeah, uh, you too. also outlined the cast shadow here I did the drop shadow and so I usually don't do different. that and it, it looked a little more cartoony mm -hmm. than when I did it maybe a tiny bit more realistically where I faded out, did you see here, yeah. the, the shadow is faded out, so not at all, uh, there's no line here, and I think it looks a little more realistic this way. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. But, you know, there are two ways of, you know. And talking about things that are curved, uh, but conveyed with straight lines. So here's an example of cross hatching. All right. Yes. Is it blurry? Are you guys? It's a bit to... blurry. I think you need yeah, to it is a bit hold blurry. it. Yeah, I think this is better. Better. Yeah. Okay. This is a perfect example of using super small hatches, very small ones, to convey. I mean, obviously, there is, you know, like the skin, kind of that sagging skin that, you know, we have under the eye, like this. Mm -hmm. Um conveyed by very straight but short uh, cross cross hatching and uh, that that uh, gives me a lot of questions right away because i think hatching and especially cross hatching in faces is so hard because if i do that i make beards <laughs> <laughs> I and know. I make beards on I people know. who are not wearing beards. I know <laughs> what you mean, because it's tricky. And this is where I think faces um, faces are very difficult when it comes to cross-hatching because you don't want to add, as you said, uh, darkness where it doesn't exist because it suddenly looks like facial hair or even dirt. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's tricky. I think the the whole drawing faces with cross hatching, it's an exercise in restraint. It's really putting all the cross hatching in the parts that are, you know, usually very defined, you know, like all these these parts here usually around the face, but then leave everything out. And also the shiny, the shiny spot on the nose. Always leave it out, right? right. Always leave that blank. Right, right. You right. have one right now too. You have that little spot and on also, your nose. And here, I think. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. and here, yeah. And of course <laughs> always along the along the nose there. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Shiny yeah. spots, leave them open and use the white of the paper. Yeah. Right. right. And that leaves me with this is that cross hatching is as much about what to leave out as it is to actually, you know, fill. So yeah. And how do you decide that you're done? Because, I mean, cross-hatching, you can keep on forever. And then it becomes mud. And then you're like, yes, oh, I, now I've overworked it. And, you know, when I said it's an exercise in restraint, I think it's really, it's really the moment where you're like, that's it. I'm walking away from this one. And this is yeah. why you see me do a lot of unfinished things like this, because I am perfectly capable of walking away from everything. Mm. I mean, this is one of them. Mm -hmm. Did I bother finishing this? This was done with a ballpoint pen. Mm -hmm. No, because I, I, I knew that by going into the gutter there, I was going to mess things up. This was enough for me. Yeah. I conveyed what I wanted to convey. 
Um, and that was that. And I know that for a lot of people, finishing the face means it's finished. But I, I have, I think, a very different relationship with uh, finished things. Right. And how long does it take you, that, that ballpoint piece that you just showed us? Um, this was a solid 40, 45 minutes. Right. Yeah. Wow. This was definitely, a, you know, kind of one of my longer, you know, drawings. Yeah. And later I came back, which is something I do rarely, and I just added a little bit more here, which I had originally not done. I had, I think, just done this. Mm. And I added just a tad here and there mm. from the same photo. This was done from a, from a photo on the internet. Right. And the pretzel, how long did it, did it take you? Oh, that must have been about 15 minutes. Seriously, so right much. You do so, that you work really quick then. Uh, yeah, mm, yeah, the, 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 definitely the, the pretzel was a fast one, that I remember. Yeah. Um, but it also depends on the pen. When the pen, you know, the pretzel, using a micron, the micron covers very black very quickly, right? Yeah. Yeah. So the moment you put like one line, it's usually that's it. Ballpoint pen can take a little longer. Yeah. Here's another example of something that I did in ballpoint pen. Oh, I love it. Yeah. You know, same thing. Did I bother finishing that? No, I just wanted to know if I could do this. And yeah. I did. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, this was fairly quick, too. This must have been about 20 minutes because that's usually all I have as far as time is uh yeah. is concerned in yeah. my day. Yeah, and um, ballpoint, do you feel like that is maybe a little bit, feels a little bit safer because if you if you have very soft strokes and it, it's lighter and if you have the, the fine liner, it's just a black line, whether you press hard or not. Yes and no, because uh, you know as well as I do that depending on how we hold a pen, like That's a Micron true. or uh, the, the multi-liner by Copic, mm -hmm. they behave a little differently. So there is a way, for example, with a Micron to start a drawing by holding it more like this than like this. And if you hold it more sideways, you have a thinner line. It's a little yeah. safer. And then you can come back later and do the frank, thick, black so even with this you can still find a way to you know to have different widths and uh yeah, yeah. darkness i would say yeah. yeah 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 okay good um i just want to get back to uh we were talking about the perspective and i see that uta had, yeah. had actually asked something about that uh the layers that are in the back of your or the lines that are in the back of your mind and she's actually asking about your ipad practice if you work in Procreate, do you ever use those lines as a separate layer? No, and um, maybe I should, but I know that they have tools like that, mm. and I know they're somewhere on in the app. I've never used them. Um, but I do know that they're available because my daughter, um, who I just bought Procreate for, she's 10 years old. Um, the other day she was drawing next to me on her iPad and she suddenly had like a grid on her iPad. And I was like, where'd you get that from? <laughs> and she's like, oh, I'm just trying out stuff on Procreate. I didn't. So no, I do not use any, uh, any pre, uh, I guess, pre-drawn lines. Right, right. No, so you, you work actually, basically it's the same way you work on paper, on only paper. It's, it's on the iPad. So it's not right. like it's a little more portable for colors and stuff like that. I don't know about you, uh, Kusha, do you ever use um, anything like that from Procreate? I, Have no. you ever used those lines? No, okay. I, no, actually I don't. I never use any um any lines or perspective i think it's just sort of ingrained or in the, maybe in the back of my mind because i did learn it but usually what i do is just really um uh, when something is in perspective i don't think about the perspective but i try for example if i draw a building that is super in perspective i just draw the sky so I use the negative space. I see, of course. And yes, if I do space. that, then I filter out the whole thing. Like I am drawing a building and it's in, in a crazy perspective. No, I'm just drawing the sky that is around it. And I, then I end up with 
Actually, and that's why it puts it on paper already. That way it kind of sits on your page. Yeah. So yeah, that yeah, really, signature. really helps me. And then, and then of course, if I start filling in details in the, in the, in the um, building, for example, then I know that that line that is super like... Um, yes, slanted, uh, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Then I know that the uh, windows will also follow that line. So the, the, exactly. those are parallel and they will, you know, um, in, mm -hmm. in perspective. So I think I have that idea of how mm -hmm. it how mm -hmm. it um, goes mm -hmm. into the um, uh, to, to that that um, vanishing point but I don't really think about it I just really mm -hmm. try to um, trust my eyes and I always always during almost every drawing if I draw from observation almost always I have a, at least one moment that I'm like no, that can't be no. right. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. then uh, every time it works out. Like, uh, yeah. if it can't be right, maybe I have to even, like you said, um, really exaggerate it. And mm -hmm. then it works even better. So Exactly. Yeah. It's like a caricature of the perspective itself. Exactly. Yes. And, and I think you some, did that with that car as well. Yeah. 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 And kind of like a face, you know, when you want to kind of exaggerate um, let's say, uh, you know, a nose a little bit. I mean, we see it in caricatures. I'm always blown away by caricatures for that reason because I always look at them and I'm like, how come this face is so not realistic but we can still recognize the person? Yeah. Well, because it is realistic, really, but it's just exaggerated in, in, in parts that everybody recognizes as yeah. being exaggerated. And, oh, I find that to be brilliant. Yes, that the is same thing. really intriguing. Yes, it's true. It's, it's the mm -hmm. same, basically. Mm -hmm. I mean, drawing anything is just drawing shapes, right? And then, yeah, if, if, you, mm -hmm. yeah, if you exaggerate very um, recognizable parts of it, then, yeah, everybody mm -hmm. knows what you're talking about in your, in right. your drawing. And yeah. it's kind of like a car too, you know, if, if everybody is familiar with a Volkswagen Beetle, you know, you can start making things with it that would still be this rec very recognizable icon, Yeah. but yeah. with, you know, with crazy perspective, which I don't think every car can be done be that way because not every car has that, oh, everybody recognizes what car this is. So yeah, that's true. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. And, mm -hmm. then, and then there's another problem there because you might uh, be able to exaggerate it. But because everybody knows the shape so well, it's also easy to spot the mistakes that you make. Yes. And that is the hardest thing about drawing a car that people tell me about. It's because we know so well what it yeah. looks like that if you stray a little bit from from that it looks off yeah same with a face mm -hmm. and that's really interesting that we can stray the right way but also the wrong way i gather yeah yeah that's that's really interesting so um mm -hmm. we are very very critical when it comes to looking at things like something's mm -hmm. off yes you see it really yeah, spotted right away yeah yeah. yeah, it's like a string that's not tuned right on the guitar and it just jumps out right away. Yeah. So if you see, if you are in the middle of drawing and then you see like, ah, oh, something's off. I, I, I can just see that, I don't know, I yeah. didn't get the proportions right or whatever. Are you then trying to fix it or are you just going with whatever you were doing and just embrace the wonkiness or the uh, proportions? Yeah. Um, I usually walk away. I'm usually oh, one yeah. of these people who will so easily walk away from a drawing if it's not going in the direction that I want because I know from that moment on um, the drawing is not going to be enjoyable. Mm -hmm. And for me, enjoying it is so such an important part of the process that if I can't, um, I, I'd rather start anew, you know, I just gave you the example of the pretzel, yeah. right? When I, when I drew that little thing and I didn't like it. It didn't work out the way it It just wanted. didn't work for me. Yeah. I just flipped the page and I immediately started another one. Um, here's another one that got away. There's a perfect example of a failed one. Shall I? Yes, show us. Why is it failed? It just didn't work. I don't know. Something here didn't uh. work. And I hated it. <laughs> I didn't like it, so I, I was like, bye, and I left. I didn't try to make it work, or maybe did I here maybe for one minute? <laughs> no. 
see how this doesn't work at all. This yeah. is not yeah. right. So yeah. Um, yeah, and my and my sketchbooks are full of things that I really didn't that didn't work out great. It's it's part of the I would say, I mean look, this is these were very quick sketches of cats. Ooh, I and like I was those. not a huge fan of them. Hmm. Because the cats, there were two cats that I was drawing at the same time, but they kept moving after a while, even when they were lying down. Uh, and I didn't do much with that. I just sketched them and kind of, oof. yeah. No, I definitely don't try to make something work when I know right. it's not going in the direction that I want. Yeah, and you, you, yeah. you said it before, like, it's not about finishing yeah. It, for you, it's really just a process, and when you're done, you're done. And it doesn't matter if the drawing is done, because it's done when you are done. <laughs> yeah. When I walk away, or when the drawing right. walks away from me, too, because there's something to be said about a drawing that is done before you realize it's done. Like, it's like, oh my gosh, what am I adding to this? That, that thing has walked away from me five minutes ago. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah, there's something to be said about that, because also, even though I do draw in sketchbooks, I am not a, ooh, let me present you my sketchbook kind of person. Because my right. sketchbook is full of um, not so good stuff. My sketchbook is not presentable at all. Um, because four pages of it, here's a perfect example, are failed drawings. That's, in my opinion, this is not a good page. I don't like looking at this. It bothers me that I even drew this. I don't like it, but it's there. Right. Yeah. I, that, so yes, yeah, I did I, walk away from it. Um, I have very quick drawings of students that I did, like sketches. It's uh, so this was personal, a isn't it? Because I think that's that sideway view of the boy in the previous page. I'm like, that's really great. But then yeah, you drew him again on this one. I saw. Yes. Yeah. And here's also very simple, uh, almost continuous line. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah you know, uh, drawings to keep my hand a little loose and, and try to resist cross-hatching. Right. This this was a perfect example. So my, my sketchbook is a mixed bag, you know, of uh, and then the next page, look at what I have. Practice of noses. Noses, 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 yeah. I see you so, do that a lot, yeah. yeah. So frankly, um, because of that, because I have no intention of ever presenting this or putting this on display anywhere, I don't feel the need to make pretty pages at all. Unlike right. people who are good at doing journals, you know, like they do a spread and it's magnificent and you turn the page and the next spread is magnificent. No, that's never been me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> never. No, I have probably I, it, five acceptable drawings and this entire <laughs> thing and that's fine. That's okay. Yes, it that's is. Okay. Yeah. But the truth is I'm not afraid to whip that out and draw in it because of that. It's not precious. This is not a precious sketchbook by any stretch of the imagination. And I it's think that is so important. Failures. I mean, not failures. I, I, I'm not trying to say, but look at this mess. There's a guitar. <laughs> someone's playing guitar. And then there's like a jug and a chair. And it all ended on the same page. I have to say, I love it. But, you know, that's, that's what I mean. It's personal. You hate looking yeah. at it because you feel like you could do better or it wasn't the right feeling during the process or whatever. And right. that's fine because every... But you know what? I drew. Yes, exactly. Every time you do a drawing, and even if you hate it, you have learned something. And yes. as you say, you just flip the page and there's another page and another chance. Yes. And That's yeah, right. so, um, and I think it's great to have, um, um, to have a sketchbook that's just not precious. It's like, I'm just drawing because I want to yeah. draw and it's not And all my sketchbooks are like that, really. If I, if I had uh, brought, you know, I have a moleskin right now going on because I always have two or three, maybe four sketchbooks going on at the same time. Mm. If I had brought my sketchbook, uh, that's the moleskin one, you would, you would have seen exactly the same thing. I don't have a very, you know, um, this is for an exhibition kind of thing. No. Kind of sketchbook. My, my sketchbooks are not that, and it's not me either. Because if I were only tackling sketchbook with the intention of doing something presentable, it would it would kill my creative, or at least my want, you know, to draw anything. Yeah. Here's a perfect example of a. I mean, look at this. 
<laughs> you know, okay. I was sitting at a table with some friends, and there was a ketchup yeah. bottle and some wine, uh, some wine glasses. Yeah. And no, in terms of presentation, I don't think this is, you know, remarkable. Plus, it's held like this, not like that. <laughs> and then a friend of mine wrote something at the top. Hey, on Sheila. Yes. <laughs> and uh, you know, because I needed to see the the name and right. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that's right. great that it is not precious. I really think that's that's very important. Oh, it's and, and it's just, you know, you answer to your need to draw, you know. You're like, well, it's a ketchup bottle. I'm just going to draw it. It doesn't matter what it turns out like. And I know that a lot of people in our community are like, I'm so afraid to mess up the page or to mess up my sketchbook. And then I do feel the urge to draw, but then I don't because I'm afraid. And then how do you then even learn to get better, you know? Yeah. Then every time I, might be a failure or a mistake exactly. or you feel anxious. Well, it should be just the process that you are enjoying instead of thinking about every page should be perfect. I think you have to tackle this whole um, process knowing that, yes, you spend, let's say, a certain amount of money on a sketchbook because they're not cheap. Mm. Um, they're not, you know, this, this could be $19 right there. Right. And you have to sort of accept that out of these $19, you're probably going to draw $5 <laughs> worth of good drawings. And I think that's really, that's really what it's about is knowing mm. that there's going to be a percentage of, um, you know, garbage, <laughs> Well, it's fine, you know. It's yeah, fine. absolutely. I mean, and that really get you. You get rid of the pressure and the fear, like right. instantly. Right. Right. Yeah. Look, stick shift of my car. Are you ready? <laughs> All right. I am ready. <laughs> Unfinished, of course, because I got I lacked interest half halfway through. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Okay. So I I just had no interest in finishing it. It was getting so dark. You know, it's got that leathery, yeah, uh, soft thing there going on, and it was so dark. I was like, no, I can't, I'm done. I can't imagine doing that. Yeah. I'm done exactly. Yeah, but I think I actually really like that when drawings aren't completely finished because um, as the viewer even though you don't even want to present it to a viewer but you will finish the thing by yourself you know you can yes. you can create this whole perfect representation of uh, for, uh, drawing from observation but you can also just decide you know what if you look at this you will understand that that is also black leather I don't That's need exactly to keep right. cross I don't hatching. Need to spell it out for you. Exactly, and it, it's more interesting to look at because there's a little bit of um, story to fill in. And also, you still see a little bit of the process of the artist in it. You know, a few years ago, I want to say three years ago, I don't know if you remember this, at the um, Met Breuer Museum in New mm -hmm. York City, mm -hmm. they had an exhibit uh, of unfinished work. The entire thing was unfinished work by several artists. And the title of the exhibition was Unfinished Thoughts Left Visible. Nice. Right? Yes. That to me, that's exactly what leaving something unfinished is all about. Is yes. that the artist is sort of letting you in on their process. Yeah. Like, look, I, I, I'm, I'm putting it out there for you to see. And that to me is, is why also I'm, I don't feel compelled to finish that's good yeah. yes and and just getting back to um <clears throat> the preciousness or the price that you pay for a sketchbook polly has a really good point she says it's really liberated uh, liberating once you forget what you paid for it and embrace the value of drawing and i know for a fact that a lot of us have bought stacks of sketchbooks. They are on the shelves in our closets or wherever. And, you know, you have already, you don't feel the pain anymore of what you paid for them. They are just there. So exactly. you better just exactly. make use of them because you've mm -hmm. already paid for it. So just use yeah. them and have some fun. But I would them. give a, also a piece of advice on top of this, um, if you don't mind, is that, yes, no, there's drawing in sketchbooks. That's one thing. But I would also advise anybody to draw on any paper. Yeah. 
and throw away what you draw after you've drawn it. And, and I know it sounds like an outrageous thing to say because we're so into exhibiting nowadays all the things that, oh, can I share with you? But I think that the moment you are ready to throw away what you drew, you are truly liberated. That is a very good point. And then you're not um, allowed to first take a picture and share it on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Seriously, I don't though, know. <laughs> it's only you and the drawing. Yeah. And it's your own process. Yeah, and exactly. All that mattered is those 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 40 minutes that you spent. But then you get rid of it. Mm. You know, Chihuly, the, um, the American sculptor, um, throws away his work after he exhibits it. Wow, that breaks all the glass. You know, there are beautiful declutters glass. everything. <laughs> yeah. So, but I mean, wow. that there's something to be said about yeah. considering something to be ephemeral, and the beauty of that thing is only only has value in having made it. Once it's made, in 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 his opinion, and I found that to be so brilliant. Once it's made, it's it's over. Yeah. So do you also, I think that's, a, that's really fantastic, actually. Once it's made, people have seen it, done. Yeah, or yeah. you've seen it, yeah. which is yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, 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 you've seen it. Right? Yeah. Um, I had a thought and then I lost it again. Oh, I'm sorry. No, that's fine. Uh, what was it? Oh, yes, um, on your iPad... Um, I'm sure you have the same kind of process, like I'm done or I don't like this. So yes. do you throw those away if you don't like them? Because if you if they are mm -hmm. in, in your sketchbook, they stay in your sketchbook. But do you just yeah, delete the ones, them? There are some that I do delete, really, that I really have no interest in revisiting. Yeah. Um, but in general, even when I have just a little bit done, I tend to keep it because the beauty of the iPad is exactly this, is that suddenly something, a clunky object that sits on the shelf next to, you know, several other clunky objects. And I hate to call a sketchbook that, but mm. at the end of the day, they take up space. Mm. Um, you know, especially when you're a person who has moved from one continent to another, you yeah. try to, like, keep light. And the iPad, to me, is the, the answer to that. It's portability. So I do keep a lot on my iPad, but I also delete a lot. When I'm not happy with something, I don't want to see it again. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. But there's something to be said also in having a record of failed drawings because it shows yeah. you where you went wrong and, oh, right, when I did this, I messed up, so I can't do that again. I so, think that's that's really the power of the sketchbook, that yeah. you have a record um well, also a record of moments in your life, which I think is really very valuable. I agree. Um, even if those moments are wonky in your lines. Um, but yeah, I mean, if I look back at a sketchbook from two years ago, five years ago, seven years ago, I can see so such a difference. And I can just, you know, you keep developing as an artist. Yeah. And you can learn so much from mistakes that you make. So I think... If you are making mistakes in your sketchbook, you should never rip the page out. Just oh, I agree. leave it in. Oh my gosh, I agree with you yeah. wholeheartedly. I mean, I'm the I'm the example of yeah. this. Obviously, I keep as much junk in this as I, oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and it's liberating yeah. to to know that it's fine. It's okay yes. to make mistakes, and it's good to make mistakes. You're supposed yeah. to make mistakes. In fact, my uh, my daughter again. Yeah, she, you know, she's 10, and she got a new, I made her a little uh, sketchbook, very easy one, by punching the holes and by putting plastic rings, and uh, I gave it to her, and that's exactly what she wanted, and she was like, yay, and she made a cover for it. A few minutes later, she comes back to me, and she goes, look at the cover, and it said, book of failures and successes. <laughs> Good! And I was like... <laughs> That's exactly what a sketchbook should be. So good. There should be as, I mean, there should be. You have to be prepared for as much failure as things that you're going to be happy about. And if that is your approach of a sketchbook, then I think you've gone, you've gone past a huge hurdle, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yes, and um, here's here's another um, uh, response to the throwing away of your work. Uh, Magdalena says, when you throw away your work, you still have that time spent with yourself to treasure. It's like a meditation. And that's so true. And but it, isn't that what it's all about? That's what process. it's all about. And that, it makes me think about another form of art, which is music. And yes. that is like, okay, you can, of course, you can record it. But if you yeah. just pick up your guitar or whatever instrument you yes. play, yes. because you feel like playing, then the music is there. And as soon as you stop playing, it's gone. It's, it's just gone. And that was it. And I think that is really a great thing. Uh, uh, thing to think about like other forms of art it's not you know you don't have a recording of it unless right. you have a recorder and actually mm -hmm. set that whole thing up exactly. but uh, it suddenly it clicked for me like yeah that's yeah. that's always i see my my husband do that all the time he he's a musician and I'm like, wow, this music is so fantastic or whatever, you know, or I hear him mm -hmm. do his uh, exercises. And then as soon as he puts his, his um, uh, uh, guitar away or his banjo or whatever, it's gone. And it's like, you just made something and now it's... It's as if yes. it never happened. It, it was all about the making of it, right? Exactly. It and you making. can see it. He has that. It is like a meditation. It is a time spent with yourself and with that and that you making can't something. You, you don't have yes. a, a physical evidence yeah. of it, but it's fine. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. And ah, it's all that stuff that you can uh, chalk up to experience. Because that moment, as Magdalena said, right? That, that experience that you had drawing it is yours. Now it's part of your experience. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. And Polly has a good point. She says it's also cheaper than therapy. So <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh, that's such a good point. Oh, I mean, we all agree that there is such a meditative aspect yes. to drawing. And, and I hold up the sketchbook, but I could hold up my iPad right now. Right. Um, the iPad does the same thing to yeah. me. There's that moment of just, yes. you know, where you just draw. Yeah. And that moment of throwing yourself in the, in the now, what you see at this very moment. Yes, yeah. And, uh, it's therapeutic. It is therapeutic, and I think that's um, like half of the answer of I mean, the question. The connection is not that great. Oh, I, I have a... Really I got you. Yeah. You're back. Okay, good. Um, I have one last question. I can't believe we already spent an hour talking. Oh, my God. I know. It's crazy. But I, okay. I do want to pick this uh, question out because I think we already gave half of the answer. Um, the question is, sometimes I feel selfish taking time for myself to draw. How do you get rid of that guilt when it comes to family and teaching? Um, I don't know. Mm. I think that, uh, allow me to assume that a woman said that. And that I think that we as, as women need to stop feeling guilty for doing things that are good for us I agree. Um, because I don't think I don't want to sound so sexist but I don't think men have half of that issue when it comes to taking time away from family to do the things that they need to do mm -hmm. so I think it's time for us to uh, maybe you know let our husbands and so forth you know companions fix dinner and then maybe we can draw or do what, what I did when I when my daughter was so little and she was so time consuming. Um, find pockets of five minutes. Yes. While you cook dinner, you just draw the potato on the table. Boom, you've drawn something for the day. And honestly, if we're gonna gonna feel guilty about drawing ten minutes a day, then then really we have to rethink our our self-worth yes I think. yes absolutely i agree and i have um another thing to say about that i think that if um it's not selfish to do because it's so good for you you know, you will be a better person if you take that time for yourself. Exactly. Mommy has been sketching, so she's a happy mommy now. And now she can, you know, get um, all the mm -hmm. attention to everything else that's going on. Mm -hmm. um, I think that is really something that that every everybody just 
really needs and deserves. Yeah. So, so I don't think... For some people it's exercise, it's running, it's this and it's yeah, that. Exactly. And for, for others it's drawing. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. It, it's part of, of uh, what makes us, you know, the, the person that we want to be. Therefore, we're going to be a better person for, for doing that. Yeah. Just uh, for the record, uh, Robert says that men can feel that also. So, uh, <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Robert, for pointing it out. Thank you. No, but yes. I think uh, I think you're right. It's it's very mm -hmm. often women who ha have that uh, feeling of guilt, um, but probably men can also feel sort of ripped between your own thing and then the other stuff that is also very important. Mm -hmm. um, so thanks, Robert, for pointing that out. That's a good point. And, but maybe uh, I haven't spoken to enough men regarding that, really. Like, you know, what really, what fatherhood, how it affected their their drawing habits, you know. Yeah. That would be an interesting conversation to have. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think Robert is open to a conversation if you want to. So, <laughs> I, I really can't believe that an hour has passed. It feels like 10 minutes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> It was fun. Yes, it was great. And uh, I don't think I have any questions left. Let me just double check. <clears throat> that was it. So thank you so much, Franz. I think um, thank you. I learned a lot today. It was a fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's great. And I hope um, everybody who's been watching has uh, learned something too. Um, uh, I hope we will all just cross hatch our way through the weekend to finish our homework for uh, that looks really real and um, once we've done that we can keep on cross hatching because we can dive into the colored pencils course which starts actually monday wow this is going yeah. too fast maybe <laughs> i don't even know so thank you so much friends i hope thank you have you. a fantastic time in maine and, yes, uh, it's a gorgeous day outside. Gorgeous. I yes, can't wait to get good. Out. Yeah, get out. Go do some sketching. Post it on Instagram so we can see what you're doing. Yes. If and I do, I'm, I'm, if I can't you guarantee that. Yeah. I am, but okay, otherwise, I'll have beautiful photos. Yeah, and we'll see the stick of your car again <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yes. have a fantastic weekend. Thanks, everyone. You and too. See you Thank soon. you. I'll see you soon. Bye. Bye bye.